Drone makes a chilling discovery in Valley no one was supposed to see this. Let's check them out. If you think the wilderness is the only thing mountains have to offer, wait until you hear about these discoveries that are seemingly out of place. From bizarre natural wonders to haunted locations, here are 20 strangest things found in the mountains. Number 20. A spring that stops every 15 minutes. Did you know that even nature has its own metronome? This river is an example of nature's complexity. Located at the foot of a rugged mountain near the town of Afton, Wyoming, is the largest rhythmic spring, known as the Intermittent Spring, or the spring that breathes. Just as its name implies, this unique spring is the largest body of water that flows and stops every 15 minutes. If you think that's astounding, wait until you hear the science behind it. It's pretty simple, actually, but it doesn't make it less astounding. The secret behind this rhythmic spring is the siphon effect. Now here's a fun little experiment. Get a small tube, or even a flexible drinking straw. Now get two containers. It doesn't matter, as long as one is taller than the other. Fill the taller container to the brim with water. Now, cover one end of the tube or the straw with your finger. Then, dip the other end into the tall container filled with water. It pulls a suction, right? Now angle the covered hole toward the shorter, empty container and release your finger. Watch the water flow up the straw and down into the shorter container. Right. Astounding, right? The same principle is at work in this body of water. Ground we used to do that at, in the fire service. You call that drafting. A lot of times you're not around a hydrant, which is a water source for you to use. Your, your tank, your uh, truck only has a thousand gallons on it. So you may have to reach into, let's say a pond, draft some water, or maybe somewhere. You, you never know where you need to, or we will set up dump tanks and put water into the dump tank and suction out of that dump tank or something like that. You know what I mean? Have the trucks go find a hydrant, fill up the thousand gallons, come back, dump it in the dump tank and do that and keep shuttling water that way. So when we would do that, you sometimes have to draft out of one, but you know what I mean? Water flows into the underground Makes caverns, sense. filling up a narrow tube. When the water reaches a certain high point in this tube, a siphon effect kicks in, mm -hmm. sucking water out of the chamber and allowing the spring to flow. Eventually, the water level drops, air rushes into the tube, and the water stops flowing, only to continue once the water has been replenished. If you want to witness this natural wonder, the intermittent spring's behavior is particularly noticeable from late summer to fall, when groundwater levels are lower. It usually runs for about 18 minutes and stops for 15 minutes. If it weren't for Archibald Gardner, who observed this cool phenomenon in 1889, we wouldn't have any idea that this intermittent spring existed in the first place. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now. Number 19. Viking Sword atop a Norwegian mountain. In 2017, reindeer hunters in Norway were baffled when they discovered an amazingly well-preserved piece of history while they were on a hike. A Viking sword that possibly dates back to 1,200 years. Experts believe that the sword, found by a reindeer hunter named Dinar Ambak, dates back to between 850 and 950 AD when Vikings roamed the seas and their tales became the stuff of legend. Despite its age, the sword was remarkably well-preserved, with only its blade showing signs of rust and the organic materials like leather straps or bone and wood adornments long since returned to the earth. It was also quite surprising how the sword was wedged between two rocks. Although rusted, it still retained its shape and was relatively well-preserved compared to other weapons of its age. Well, if it weren't for the low pressure and the extreme cold up in the mountain, the sword most likely would have degraded faster. After learning about the discovery, researchers, accompanied by Einar and a local metal detectorist and archaeologist, returned to the site. They scoured the mountain, hoping to find more historical artifacts. But unfortunately, they found nothing else of importance on the mountain's surface. Number 18. Bronze Age Brain now here's another astounding discovery from 2017, this time in the Seyidamor Mound in Turkey. While exploring the area, archaeologists in the country stumbled upon an impressive find, well-preserved brain tissue. Now the impressive part is how it came to be preserved. Thousands of years ago, an earthquake hit the area where the brain was found, trapping the inhabitants under rubble. And then, 
A fire ravaged the region, consuming everything in its path, including all the oxygen. This led to the brain's preservation, with the only drawback being that it was boiled until dried. However, this lack of moisture prevented its decay, which is remarkable. The location where the fire occurred also played a role in the brain tissue's preservation. You see, the soil in this area was like a secret ingredient in a recipe containing high levels of potassium, magnesium, and aluminum. This combination led to the formation of vatipasir, or corpse wax, a substance that's quite effective in preserving human matter. This but what can brain tissue tell you if you study it? Because normally if we find something, we'd be like, oh man, if they study this, then they, we could figure out how they did this back in the day. They, they, they did this, or we may learn this about them. What can brain... I don't, I don't know, that's why I'm asking. Is there a way to study that and learn something from that about the, the people from that time? It's curious. This brain's preservation is so exceptional that it caught the attention of scientists far and wide. Typically, brain tissue is tricky to preserve since it's rich in enzymes and cells that deteriorate quickly after death. This find was so unexpected that it's encouraged archaeologists to start looking a little closer hoping to uncover more ancient treasures around the mound. Hmm. Today, this tissue is being examined to learn more about the health conditions of people who lived in the region 4,000 years ago. Number 17. Stone Sculpting Hermit Meet Alberto Gutierrez, a man known more by his moniker, the Hermit of Nicaragua, or simply the Stone Man. This man is nothing short of incredible. He decided to live in the serene mountains of Nicaragua and spend his days sculpting in the mountains. Or, should I say, sculpting the mountain itself. Alberto, born on October 17, 1944, in a village near Esteli City, was always drawn to the forest surrounding his home. At the age of 33, amidst the turmoil of war in Nicaragua, he decided to follow a childhood dream, a vivid vision he had at the age of nine of sculpting a mountain. This dream led him to El Halacate Mountain, overlooking the Tise Estanzuela Reserve where he recognized the 300-foot rock from his dream. And so, he left his previous life behind and built a small wooden hut in the mountains. He lived there without running water or electricity. He learned to adapt and survive in nature. Using simple tools like pieces of rebar and a metal blade, he began carving and managed to shape it into a diverse sculpture featuring various elements, such as elephants and cheetahs. Due to his hermit lifestyle, Alberto has become somewhat of a local legend and a tourist attraction. People from around the world have visited him. In fact, he's been visited by approximately 30,000 people in the last decade. His fame has grown through the internet, which is quite ironic considering Alberto never bothered to familiarize himself with technology. Number 16. 5,400 year old tomb. In 2023, Archaeologists in southern Spain stumbled upon a tomb that's believed to be over 5,400 years old. This tomb was discovered near a prominent lone mountain in the region, but the preservation of the site is only one of the reasons for its infamy. This site is known as Piedras Blacas, or White Stones. Now what's interesting about this is the fact that it perfectly aligns with the sunrise of the summer solstice, also known as domesticated sunlight. Each year on June 21st, the rising sun's rays create a mesmerizing dance of shadows and light upon a stone steel within the tomb, similar to the effect observed at Newgrange in Ireland. This site shows how remarkable and incredible the Neolithic people were and how they understood astronomy better than we initially believed. Number 15. Ancient Roman Shrine In 2020, on a seemingly mundane day, a hiker suddenly stumbled upon something surprising in the Swiss Alps an ancient Roman coin. This marked the beginning of archaeologist curiosity and interest in the Swiss Alps. And so, excavations began between the Amerton Horn and Wildstrubel Mountains, around 8,500 feet above sea level. Their efforts were greatly rewarded. They found 100 coins, 27 rock crystals, 59 Roman shoe nails, a brooch, and even a fragment of a votive plaque shaped like a leaf. The items found suggest this was a holy site, perhaps a mm. kind of ancient pilgrimage destination where people deposited these items as votive offerings. Think of it as an ancient wishing well of sorts, except instead of throwing in a penny for good luck, you'd leave a Roman coin, or if you're feeling particularly generous, a nice shiny rock crystal. 
The coins provide a timeline dating from the 1st to the 5th century CE, Jeez. spanning the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. Experts discovered that it wasn't just a one-off event. It seems people were dropping by for centuries. The location, high up in the mountains, was probably chosen for its natural beauty and perhaps its abundance of rock crystals. Nearby Thun has several Roman temples, including the region's religious significance in ancient times. Number 14. Iron Age Sandal In the remote and rugged mountains of Norway, a hiker's keen eye led to an unexpected discovery. A See, I'm always fascinated by this because I always think about, you know, what did they use to keep warm or what did they use to uh, protect their feet and different things like that. So seeing the the, the sandals and what they used to make it kind of gives you a glimpse of of how creative they were, how smart they were, how intuitive they were, like just the different things that they utilized to, you know, deal with maybe the weather coming up or deal with the terrain they may be traveling through or something like that. So I'm always wondering about that for some strange reason. 1,700 year old sandal believed to be from the Iron Age. Found in 2019, this ancient footwear was dug up on a high-altitude mountain pass, suggesting that the area was a travel route centuries ago. While it might conjure up images of a time-traveling Roman tourist still prepared for the Nordic climate, experts believe the original wearers of such sandals were adept at navigating these harsh terrains. They likely added extra insulation with scraps of fabric or animal skin. Those were the Jordans before Jordans was created. <laughs> you think they had like designer styles? Maybe for somebody like a king or a prince or, or a queen or whoever higher up. You think they had better shoes for them than the one that maybe the people wore? See, see, this is the type of stuff that I'd be going on in my head that I'd be questioning. Like, oh man, I wonder did they have some form of designer wear? for the for the the people who were considered to be you know royalty in this find is part of a larger puzzle revealing a network of ancient mountain trails connecting inland norway to the coast used from around 200 ce to the end of the 900s the discovery of horse dung from the viking age along with other items indicates significant activity in this area during that time as the ice continues to melt it's anticipated that more artifacts will emerge, revealing secrets about ancient Norway. Number 13. The Cursed Bangar Fort Nestled in the heart of Rajasthan, India, Bangar Fort stands as a relic of a once thriving town, now steeped in mystery and eerie tales. Built in the 17th century by Raja Mato Singh, the younger brother of the Mughal general Man Singh of Amber, this fort has garnered a reputation for being one of the most haunted places in India. The legend of Bangar begins with a curse. It's said that a sage cursed the entire town to ultimate devastation, resulting in a disastrous defeat for the ruler of Bangar, with his army annihilated and the inhabitants brutally massacred. The fate of the princess, a central figure in these tales, remains shrouded in mystery, rumored to be condemned to roam the grounds of the fort. The Archaeological Survey of India, or ASI for short, has even put up warning signs around the fort advising visitors to leave the premises before sunset. The area is known for its unexplainable incidents, including people getting lost or facing accidents, which led to the restriction of entry for foreign tourists without a special permit. An intriguing aspect of Bangar is its roofless houses. Local legend attributes this to the curse of the sage, as any attempt to construct a roof supposedly leads to its collapse. Despite its ominous reputation, the fort is home to several ancient temples dedicated to Hindu deities, which adds a spiritual dimension to the place. Number 12. Oldest High-Altitude Human Settlement In the high, cold reaches of the Peruvian Andes, archaeologists stumbled upon something extraordinary. The oldest known evidence of high-altitude human habitation, this ancient settlement, nestled at nearly 14,700 feet above sea level, was occupied about 12,000 years ago. Imagine Ice Age humans braving thin, oxygen-poor and chilly temperatures, setting up camp in a rock shelter adorned with soot-blackened ceilings and walls graced with rock art. They left behind spear points, scrapers, bifaces, stone tools flaked on both sides, and even large mammal bones. The discovery challenges our understanding of early human adaptation to extreme environments, 
showing that humans lived and thrived in high altitudes much earlier than previously thought. Number 11. That's another thing that's fascinating to, to me as well, because sometimes and it's just it's rare, but sometimes I think like we could be headed back to those times. You know what I mean? With so much of the destruction and wars and everything that's going on in the world, we could be driven back to a time to where we're seeking refuge inside of a cave or, you know what I mean? Something like that. And I often wonder, like, what did how did they survive? So like learning and paying attention to what they did, how different techniques and different things they used to survive back then may be useful for us in the future if we head back there. And that might not be so far-fetched because people are already preparing for what a zombie apocalypse or something like that, which could drive you to living in a cave somewhere. I don't know. Evan, six million year old fossil groundwater in a groundbreaking discovery deep beneath the Hyblaean Mountains in Sicily, a multi-institutional team of geoscientists uncovered an ancient underground pool of fresh water. This isn't just any groundwater. It's estimated to be around 6 million years old. The aquifer, believed to be a result of the Mycenaean salinity crisis, is located thousands of feet beneath the surface and holds about 17.5 cubic kilometers of water. The origin story of this ancient water is quite fascinating. During the Mycenaean salinity crisis, around 5.3 to 7.2 million years ago, the Mediterranean Sea almost completely dried up due to a blockage at the Strait of Gibraltar. This event exposed the seafloor and allowed rainwater to trickle down into the Earth's crust. This rainwater was then absorbed by the carbonate rock beneath the mountains, acting much like a sponge. When the sea levels returned to normal, this trapped freshwater was compressed and preserved by the pressure of the overlying seawater. What makes this discovery even more intriguing is its potential impact. Researchers are looking at the possibility of tapping into this ancient water source to alleviate water scarcity issues in Sicily. This discovery could also inspire similar explorations in other parts of the Mediterranean and beyond, opening up new possibilities for addressing freshwater shortages in various regions. It's remarkable to think that water that infiltrated the Earth's crust millions of years ago could one day quench the thirst of modern civilizations. Number 10. The Brown Mountain Lights Brown Mountain, located in the Pisgah National Forest of North Carolina, has been the stage for recurring sightings of mysterious lights dating back to the early 1900s. The folklore around these lights is as rich as it is varied. According to one Cherokee legend, the lights are believed to be the spirits of Indian maidens still searching for their warriors who died in a great battle fought around 1200 AD between the Cherokee and Catawba Indians. This romantic yet haunting image has captured the imagination of many over the years. Scientific attempts to explain these lights have been numerous and diverse. Initially, in 1913, the U.S. Geological Survey suggested that the lights were merely reflections of locomotive headlights. But this theory was discarded when the tracks washed away and the sightings persisted. Over the years, various explanations like inflamed nitrous vapors, aliens, and ghostly apparitions have been proposed, but none have conclusively solved the mystery. Daniel Caton, a professor at Appalachian State University, has approached the phenomena with a scientific lens, attributing most sightings to misinterpretations of natural nighttime occurrences like stars or light pollution. However, he also entertains the possibility of ball lightning, a rare and unexplained natural phenomena as a potential explanation for some sightings that defy the usual explanations. Caton and his team have been using remote cameras to capture images and data, but so far, this has yielded little to support the more exotic theories. The Brown Mountain Lights have not only intrigued locals and scientists, but have also seeped into popular culture. They've inspired a bluegrass song titled Legend of the Brown Mountain Lights and have been featured in various TV shows and films, adding to the mystique of this unexplained phenomenon. Number 9. Europe's Oldest Tree In the heart of Europe, specifically in Italy, resides a remarkable natural wonder known as Italus, a tree that's not only witnessed centuries pass by, but also holds the title of Europe's oldest known living tree. This ancient Bosnian pine is situated in the rugged and scenic landscapes of Italy's highlands. The Talos has been dated to be over 1,230 years old. Jeez. That's right. This tree was already growing when Charlemagne was busy uniting much of Western Europe under his rule. To put it in perspective, 
When Attalus was just a young sapling, the Byzantine Empire was in full swing, and the Vikings were making their mark across Europe and beyond. Determined through the meticulous science of dendrochronology, essentially counting and analyzing tree rings, the age of Attalus was confirmed. The tree resides in a remote and harsh environment, braving the elements at the upper limit of the tree line. Its location and longevity make it a remarkable specimen for scientific study, as well as a symbol of endurance and the passage of time. The Talos stands alongside other ancient trees, forming a grove of senior citizens in the botanical world. It's fascinating to think about what this tree has witnessed over the centuries, from the fall of empires to the rise of nations, through wars, renaissance, revolutions, and the rapid technological advancements of the 20th and 21st centuries, Italus has been a silent witness to history unfolding. The discovery and study of Italus provide valuable information about environmental changes over the centuries. As researchers continue That's to- That's why you would always hear people, well, I would hear some people say, trees tell a story of a time that once was. And I never really paid attention to that, but look at this tree right here. Definitely probably could tell a story. Study this and other ancient trees. They hope to obtain more information about past climate patterns, helping us understand how our environment has evolved and what the future may hold. Number eight, Goyaju Caves. Tucked away in the young oh, that cave looked like a giant ant hill. Number eight, Goyaju Caves. Tucked away in the Yangqing district of Beijing, China, lies a fascinating historical site known as the Goyaju Caves. Discovered in 1984 during a cultural relic survey, these caverns are a complex network of more than 350 chambers carved into the rocky slopes of the Tianwang Mountain. The site spans across the northern, southern, and eastern slopes, featuring around 117 caves. It's quite a sight, reminiscent of a honeycomb structure etched into the mountainside. What's intriguing about these caves is the precision and thoughtfulness in their design. Each cave typically has three rooms, including a small living space and a warehouse. Some are even two-storied, connected by intricately carved stairs and stone bridges. The rooms vary in shape and size, with the largest being 20 meters long. The average Jeez. room height is around 1.6 to 1.7 meters, leading some to speculate that the community living here might have been of small stature. The Goyang I mean, in those times, how much space did you really need? It ain't like today's time where you got all of this stuff, furniture and different things. No, you needed a spot for your food. You ain't really have no electronics back then. Or did they? We still don't know. Still trying to figure that out. But I mean, how much space did you really need? Anju Caves have their own drainage and water storage system, indicating a high level of sophistication in engineering. The chambers serve various purposes ranging from communal events and royal quarters to religious rituals and storage. The site also includes rock-cut furnishings like beds, lampstands, storage compartments, and stone tablets. Some believe that the largest and most complex chamber, known as the Guantangzi, or Golden Temple, was used for communal gatherings or religious ceremonies. The people who built these caves are a complete mystery, as there's no clear historical record of these cave dwellers. Some suggest they were still giving me ant hill vibes. I just can't unsee it. Like, I just think ants <laughs> were built by the Kumoshi, a Mongolian steppe people from over a thousand years ago. Others theorize the caves might have been a granary built during the Tang Dynasty or a military garrison from the Han Dynasty. The absence of organic materials for reliable dating and the lack of frescoes or carvings in the cave system add to the enigma. In 1991, the Goyaju Caves officially opened to visitors, and in 2013, they were listed as a major historical and cultural site protected at the national level in China. Number 7. Village of the Cloud People The Chachapoyas, also known as the Warriors of the Clouds or the Cloud People, were an ancient culture inhabiting the Amazonian Andes in present-day Peru. Their civilization flourished in a region often referred to as the Amazonian Andes, a part of the Andes mountain range covered by dense tropical forests. This unique geographical setting, combining high mountains with lush rainforests, earned them their expressive nickname. Living between elevations of 2,000 to 3,000 meters, the Chachapoyas are known for their impressive architectural achievements, including the monumental fortress of Cuelap. Often compared to Machu Picchu, Cuelap features massive exterior stone walls and over 400 interior buildings. The Chachapoyas' origins and their eventual fate add to their mystique. 
Archaeological evidence shows both Inca and Chachapoya settlements in the area, indicating some level of acceptance of Inca rule. However, historical sources suggest a more rebellious attitude towards their conquerors. The conquest of the Chachapoyas by the Inca Empire occurred around the second half of the 15th century under the rule of Tupac Inca Yupanqui. Their physical appearance, as noted by the Spanish conquerors, was strikingly different from other indigenous groups in the region. They were described as having fair skin, and their women were noted for their beauty. Despite mm. the conquistadors' arrival in 1535 and their alliance with the Chachapoyas to reclaim land from the Incas, the introduction of European diseases like smallpox eventually led to the demise of the Chachapoya people. Modern archaeological discoveries continue to shed light on this enigmatic culture. In 2006, an underground burial site containing Chachapoya mummies were found, providing an image of their physical characteristics and their cultural practices. Yet much about the Chachapoyas remains a mystery, including their original name, as Chachapoya is derived from the Quechua language of the Incas. Number 6. 7,000-Year-Old Sculptures Nestled in the Maiji district of Tanshui City, Gansu Province, China, the Maiji Shan Grottoes are a magnificent ensemble of art and spirituality. This intricate network of Buddhist caves is carved into the cliff face of Maiji Mountain. The story of the Maiji Shan Grottoes begins around 384 to 417 AD, during the later Qin Dynasty. Over the centuries, the site grew to encompass 221 caves with a staggering collection of more than 10,632 clay sculptures and over 1,300 square meters of murals. These figures range from monumental to minute, showcasing the evolution of Chinese clay sculpture art over a millennium. One of the site's most iconic features is its location on the steep cliff of Maiji Mountain, about 70 meters above the ground. The largest and most famous cave, Cave 4, also known as the Seven Buddha Pavilion, houses a splendid hall steeped in Buddhist lore. It's playfully called the Sprinkling Flower Tower, based on a Buddhist tale about the Bodhisattva testing his disciples by sprinkling flowers from the cave. The caves are divided into two main areas, the western and eastern cliffs. They house an array of Buddhist statues, murals, and architectural structures that are a feast for the eyes. The clay sculptures in the Maiji Shan Grottoes are known for their intricate details and secularized depictions, bringing them closer to the daily life of the era. In contrast to the Mogao Grottoes, which are renowned for their murals, the Maiji Shan Grottoes are celebrated for their exquisite clay sculptures. Visiting the Maiji Shan Grottoes is an adventure in itself. The caves are connected by plank walkways hanging off the cliff face offering a thrilling experience. From that view right there, that just kind of, I don't know, just my stomach just started to drop. Y'all know I don't like planes, so just seeing this right here reminds me of being, or, or makes me think about somebody being high up in a plane, or just being off the side of this cliff like this, this mountain or whatever, just out there like that. All those people, nah, no, nah, bro. I can see it from the bottom. I take pictures from the bottom, no thank you. Experience for visitors. While the climb may be challenging for some, the breathtaking views and the artistic splendor of the caves make it an unforgettable experience. Now, for anyone interested in exploring the rich history and artistic heritage of China, a visit to the Maiji Shan Grottoes is a must. Wow. Number 5. The Energy Pyramids of Bosnia In the picturesque landscape of Bosnia, near the town of Viscovo, lies a series of hills that have sparked a blend of curiosity, controversy, and cultural pride. These are the so-called Bosnian pyramids, brought to public attention in 2005 by Samir Osmanagic, a Bosnian-American businessman. He proposed that these hills, including the largest Visachika hill, are not mere natural formations, but ancient pyramidal structures created by an advanced civilization. Osmanagic's claims were based on observations such as the pyramidal shape of the hills, their orientation toward the cardinal points, and the existence of underground tunnels known as Rabna tunnels. He suggested these hills could be over 30,000 years old, built by a civilization predating known history, possibly the Illyrians. He even claimed the discovery of standing waves at the site, which he believed could facilitate intergalactic communication. The Bosnian pyramids quickly gained popularity, especially among the local Bosniak population. Who would definitely piqued my interest saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime we start talking about the possibility of, of intergalactic or alien UFO, something like that, contact, 
I'm all ears. But I, at the same time, I'm looking at this hill and everything. I'm like, you know, this could have been a volcano as well at one point in time. And it's just now just, I don't know. I don't see the rock that I would imagine to see to make me like really, really believe it could possibly be a volcano. But that's in the back of my mind as well. Who embraced them as a symbol of national pride and a connection to a glorious ancient past. Visoko became a tourist destination with local authorities and schools endorsing visits to the site. However, Osmanagic's claims have been met with significant skepticism and criticism from the scientific community. Experts in archaeology and geology, including the European Association of Archaeologists, have dismissed the claims as pseudoscientific. They argue that the hills are natural formations known as flatirons, common in many parts of the world. Geological analyses show that these hills comprise layers of conglomerate, clay, and sandstone, typical of the region's natural geological formation. Qualified scientists have voiced concerns that Osmanagic's excavations could be causing irreversible damage to real archaeological and historical sites. There's also criticism about the methodology used in his research, with some named experts denying involvement in the project. Furthermore, the claims of concrete blocks and ancient construction techniques have not been substantiated by credible scientific evidence. Number 4. The Myrtles Plantation The Myrtles Plantation, nestled in St. Francisville, Louisiana, is steeped in a history as rich as it is haunting. Built in 1796 by General David Bradford, this plantation was initially named Laurel Grove, Bradford, Fleeing justice for his role in the Whiskey Rebellion, sought refuge in this Spanish colony. The property later passed to his daughter and her husband, Clark Woodruff, marking the beginning of a series of tragedies and ghost stories that would make the Myrtles infamous. One of the most well-known legends associated with the Myrtles is that of Chloe, a slave girl. As the story goes, Woodruff, described as an honest man with a fatal flaw for pleasure, turned his attention to Chloe. Fearing punishment from Woodruff's wife, Chloe began eavesdropping on family conversations. Caught in the act, Woodruff ordered her ear cut off as punishment, forcing her to wear a turban henceforth. In an act of revenge, Chloe allegedly poisoned the family's food, leading to the deaths of Woodruff's wife and two children. The other slaves, fearing repercussions, hanged Chloe and disposed of her body in a river. And so, Chloe's spirit is said to haunt the plantation to this day. In 1834, the plantation changed hands to Ruffin Gray Sterling, who remodeled it, nearly doubling its size. See, I don't play with stuff like that. I don't. Don't ask me, do I believe it? Because I might tell you, yeah, I might believe that it's true and that type of stuff when when spirits are at unrest and, and heinous and vile and acts and different things like that are committed. Yeah, I don't play around with nothing like that. No, you tell me about that place, you tell me the history, the backstory to it, I'm going to take you at your face value. I'm going to take you at your word. I'm going to believe you, and I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I don't want to go in there. I don't want to feel it. I don't want to experience it. No, I, I ain't playing with none of that. The property's name was then changed to the Myrtles. Tragedy continued to strike, as many of Sterling's children died young. And in 1874, William Winter, Sterling's son-in-law, was fatally shot on the property. His ghost is said to relive his final moments in the house staggering to the 17th step, where he died. The Myrtles has changed owners several times since then, each seemingly adding to its lore. In the 1970s, when the mayor's family purchased the property and opened it as a bed and breakfast, reports of paranormal activity began to surface. Guests reported hearing strange noises and seeing apparitions, including that of a young girl in a turban, presumed to be Chloe. In 1992, a photograph taken at the plantation supposedly captured Chloe's ghost. However, historical records challenge the accuracy of these legends. For instance, there's no record of a slave named Chloe at the Myrtles, and the Woodruff's deaths were attributed to yellow fever, not poisoning. The plantation's reputation for hauntings and ghost sightings has still sounds close to me. <laughs> still not chancing it at all. Not, no, mm -mm, I, it's too late. I've heard it. I can't unhear it nonetheless persisted. Number 3. Pendle Hill The Pendle Witch Trials of 1612, among the most famous events in English history, unfolded around Pendle Hill in Lancashire. Twelve people, mostly from two families, were accused of murdering ten individuals through witchcraft. The trials are notable for their extensive documentation and for their high number of executions. 
10 of the accused were hanged. A striking aspect of these trials was the reliance on testimony from a nine-year-old, Janet Device, against her own family. The backdrop of these events was a society steeped in religious and political turmoil, where witchcraft was both a feared and misunderstood phenomenon. These trials reflect a period of history where superstition and the law intertwined, leading to tragic consequences that are remembered to this day. Number 2. Hidden Between the Valleys In the Anshan region of southwest China's Guizhou province, in a hidden valley, was a curious sight that has intrigued locals and tourists. This discovery, best seen through a drone, is an unexpected wonder in the mountains. Hundreds of mysterious wooden coffins. Now why exactly are there coffins and remains here? Well, experts believe this practice, which has been followed since ancient times, is thought to help the souls of the departed ascend to heaven. In one cave alone, over 500 coffins can be found, some in various stages of decay. This tradition... I used to think this tradition here was... was very very odd but then i got to thinking i guess maturity set in i was like some people could look at the way we do it and say it's odd you know because it's not something they're accustomed to or they grow up uh knowing that's all they knew was this way so they may look at us and i was like you know what i can't really look at that and say who says what's the right way and the wrong way to to do that to bury or to where to place the dead or these coffins with the dead inside so, I don't know. That was just something that I was thinking about recently. It have originated from the local people's desire to return to their homeland as they moved to the mountainous region to escape war centuries ago. Instead of burying their dead, they placed the coffins in caves, representing a temporary resting place. Another belief is that the practice started to protect the coffins from floods, with the added benefit of being closer to the sky and thus closer to heaven. Number 1. Lost Languages and the World's Oldest Library The St. Catherine's Monastery in Sinai, Egypt houses one of the world's oldest continuously used libraries. This library is a treasure trove of thousands of manuscripts and books, wow. some of which hold hidden gems in the form of ancient texts. Using advanced technology, researchers have been uncovering texts previously erased and overwritten by monks at the monastery. Among these rediscovered texts are writings in languages that have long been lost, including Caucasian Albanian and Christian Palestinian Aramaic. These manuscripts offer a unique glimpse into the past and contribute significantly to our understanding of these ancient languages. The Sinai Palimpsests project has been pivotal in bringing these secret writings to light, making the images of these palimpsests available online for further study.